Hello, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I sit, have a cup of coffee, and just kind of talk about oil painting. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. And if at any point during this video you're like, hey, you know what, I like this guy, I kind of like what he's saying, I would like to learn some more from them. I wonder if he has a course. The answer to that question is yes, I do have a Foundations of Oil Painting course, so if you're just getting started in oil painting, I can't recommend this course enough. It's the course I wish I had when I first started oil painting. I'll put a link to where you can get that in the description below. So over the past year or so, I've worked a lot with my uh, Patreon students and I've had a, a bunch of one-on-one -on -one clients. I found it very interesting to observe which students progressed more than others and try and figure out why that was. Like what were the students that were you know, progressing a lot faster doing that maybe the students that weren't progressing as much not doing. So I thought about this for a while and I identified what I thought were the key things uh, students were doing that was causing them to improve at a higher rate. So the first thing is time. I mean, this is kind of obvious, you know, you put more time in, you're obviously gonna get better. I found it interesting because the people that spent more time painting didn't necessarily have more time to paint. I had students that would paint every single day that had full-time jobs, very time-consuming jobs, high-stressful jobs, but they found the time to paint. And I think that they were able to find time because they were very interested in getting better. They really wanted to get better. When you really wanna do something, you're gonna find time to do it. So I think your desire to get better is linked to your time because we're all given the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours in the day and it's how you decide to delegate your time to what you feel is important. And like I said, a lot of the students that painted a lot had plenty of excuses not to paint. They had families, careers, tons of stuff going on, but they were able to make painting a part of their life. That was a big factor is that they were able to structure their painting time into their life. They didn't just kind of wing it and say like, oh, I'll paint when I can. They, they structured time and they knew beforehand you know, what times they were gonna paint. The next thing is why you paint. I found that the students that painted because they just really wanted to get better at painting and they really enjoyed the process of painting saw way better results. I always say fall in love with the process, not the end product. Don't be painting just to have a painting to show to people or to sell or to post on Instagram or stuff like that. You know, doing all that stuff is fine. You can have a painting that you're intending to do that stuff with, that's completely fine, but don't make that where you get the most joy. It was the students that painted because they just really enjoyed painting that seemed to progress the most. They weren't painting to sell their paintings, even though a lot of them did sell their work. They weren't necessarily painting to sell their work. There's a big difference. They also weren't afraid of making bad paintings. They were afraid of trying different things. Every single painting they did didn't need to be a masterpiece that they were going to sell or get framed or put in a gallery. Again, they cared more about the process. They enjoyed the process of painting and the process of getting better, of solving problems. If you paint just for the end product, you're gonna get discouraged because newsflash, you're gonna have bad paintings. You're gonna have a lot of bad paintings. I'm speaking from experience. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of bad paintings. So if you're waiting for that end product to give you the joy and the satisfaction of painting, you're gonna be let down a lot. And if you are let down a lot, your chances of giving up and not wanting to paint are gonna go up. They also weren't afraid to paint different subjects. I've always said, don't care about what you paint, care about how you paint. You know, it doesn't matter if you're painting a still life, a landscape or a portrait, you're still practicing the same set of skills. I find myself that I'm not drawn exactly to certain subject matter as much as certain qualities all subject matters share, you know, light patterns or values or colors or shape compositions. Like I can find interesting light in an apple. I can find interesting light in a landscape and a portrait. That's kind of stuff that makes me interested in painting and wanting to paint something. And since it's that and not a specific subject, I feel like my opportunity to paint is a lot greater because I can be interested in painting many different things and I have no problem painting a lot of different things. That's one that's going to keep my interest, you know, changing. It's going to keep things fresh and, you know, you're always going to be working on something new. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is being honest with your abilities. The students that were honest with themselves and acknowledging 
their weaknesses in painting and addressing them and, and strengthening them are the ones that got better. You know, painting and art in general is very subjective and it's very easy to create excuses to make yourself feel better about a certain area that you're lacking in. Or listening to people that are trying to be nice. No, I like the way you made her nose crooked and off center. It gives it character. Yeah, I don't think the client's gonna think that. I know this can be hard. I mean, I myself, for the longest time, I had trouble painting cars. Like if I was doing cityscapes, and, you know, especially painting in plain air, and there was cars parked on the side of the street, I was like, ugh, I don't wanna have to paint these cars. So I'd either like paint the street without the cars there. I got a bunch of cityscapes where it looks like it's a deserted city because there's no cars. And I just didn't, I didn't understand how to paint them. I wasn't good at them. I'd try and crop things and choose scenes where there weren't as many cars. And I shouldn't have done that. You know, I should have leaned into that. And I should have said, you know what? You know, for the next two months, I'm gonna paint nothing but cityscapes that have cars in them and get better at that there. So in the future, that's not a weakness, it becomes a strength. And I have worked on it and I have gotten better at painting cars. It's still, it's still tough for me, but I feel like I've gotten better and I didn't get better until I addressed that, hey, you're not good at this, go practice this. Now I took painting classes in college. I didn't necessarily learn anything in the painting classes in college because the instructors didn't exactly teach painting, but I remember every time it came to critique other students work everybody would just be really really nice and there was one guy in there that you know i talked to a lot and you know we liked each other's work and he would talk to me and tell me about like what he was trying to do and what he wanted to do with his paintings so when it came time to critique it like i i could tell him like hey like this isn't working and that isn't working because i know that you said you know you're trying to have this kind of look and trying make this look more real and, and have this texture. So, you know, I would point out things that were wrong and he'd actually come up to me later on and be like, like, thank you. Thank you for telling me this. Like, thank you for, you know, pointing out what's not working. Now, a lot of people in that class, I feel like didn't get any better because they would just have everybody else just saying nice things and actually became a problem. Like the instructor at one point is like, you know, guys, you can, you can say bad things like about the person's work like that's what this is this this is for like you're supposed to point out things that might not be working so the artist can learn from that and get better okay now when it comes to getting instruction from somebody no matter who you're getting it from you know really listen to it and learn to apply it really go all the way with it and don't be learning from a bunch of people at the same time uh, I've also fallen into that trap. I was, you know, learning through a bunch of different people online for plain air painting and always liken it to, you know, imagine if you were trying to learn how to tie your shoes when you're a little kid, but you had five different people telling you five different ways how to tie your shoes. Like you never would have learned how to tie your shoes. And when you're starting out, I feel it's very important to find one person or one uh, method of painting and stick with that for at least like a year or two to to, until you get your feet under you and you understand oil painting, then you can start branching off. But when you're learning from somebody, really, you know, put your trust in them and, and things are gonna get hard and you're not gonna always understand exactly what they're getting at or what they're trying to do. But, you know, just keep going. It will make sense. Like this stuff isn't easy. It's not easy to, to wrap your mind around. There are so many good painting teachers out there and so many good painting methods they all work really well but you have to give it time and kind of give yourself over to the process to see it through and to get through those hard spots where it's not making sense and you're struggling you got to get through those to fully understand what's going on if you just kind of if you're with an instructor or learning a, a method and it gets difficult and hard and you're like oh like it's hard now like i, want, I don't want to do this now because it's got hard i'm going to try something else then you're gonna to go to a different method or instructor, kind of start over, go through those beginning stages where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, this is fun. This is interesting because it's new and you're making strides. And then you're just gonna hit another wall or plateau again because it's gonna get hard and you're just gonna to bounce to another one. You can always bounce to a different method or instructor and just kind of get the easy good parts. But pushing through the difficult parts and putting trust in whatever method or, or teacher you're learning from is what's gonna help you get past plateaus and see results. And the last thing is the students that don't let bad paintings discourage them are the ones that really 
see big improvement. When you have a bad painting, you can do one of two things. You can either let it get you down and say, this is hard, I can't do this, why am I trying? I don't got the artistic gene. Or you can say to yourself, I'm gonna honor the effort. I sat down and I tried to paint. I figured out another way on how not to paint this subject. And I'm gonna identify the things I did wrong so I don't do them again. And understand that you had to paint that bad painting. You had to go through that bad painting to get to the good ones. And no painting is ever a waste of time. Whenever any of my students say, oh man, like I spent so much time on this painting and, and it turned out horrible, I just wasted six hours. I say like, no, like you're not allowed to say that. Ne whenever you're painting, whenever you're putting paint on the canvas, it is not a waste of time. I don't care how bad the painting turns out. Don't ever tell yourself it's a waste of time. That is the absolute worst thing you can say to yourself. Of all the videos and all the advice I've given on YouTube, if you wanna know the absolute worst thing that you can do as an oil painter is to say whenever you did a painting that that was a waste of time. That will destroy you. That will destroy you mentally if you think that is a waste of time because that is going to happen a lot. And if you get in your mind that whenever a painting doesn't work, it's a waste of time, you're just gonna logically go to the next step and be like, well, I've messed up a lot of paintings. I've wasted a lot of time. And the truth is, is that you will learn way, way more from the failed paintings than the successful paintings. If you do a painting and it all goes right and it looks good and you're like, oh, that was great, that was easy. Like, what did you learn? You didn't really learn anything. You just kind of did things that you already knew. You didn't shine any light on things that you didn't know or any weaknesses that you need to get better at. The students of mine that when they have a failed painting, look at it and go, all right, I'm gonna use this to motivate me to wanna do better next time. I'm not gonna let this keep me from wanting to paint. I'm gonna use it to motivate me to paint even more, to get even better, to make sure I don't make these mistakes again. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna check out my Foundations of Oil Painting course, I got a link to that in the description below. Also down there is a link to my Patreon page where I have full painting video tutorials. If you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Mm -hmm.